Hey folks, Scott Kelby here from KelbyOne.com, an online educational community dedicated to teaching people Photoshop and Lightroom and photography, but that's not why we're here today. We have two and a half awesome Photoshop tips. So the half one's kind of, it's not as awesome as the others, but the last tip is really, really, really useful. All right, so here we are. We have our image, and I, I was, this is a real world example, and, and the reason I decided to do this video, because it just happened to me while working on this, this is a thumbnail template for a video I did for LightroomKillerTips.com, which is our sister site. And uh, it's it's the YouTube template for my tip on renaming your photos in Lightroom. So I, I have this photo in the background that I used actually in the technique of this video. And I'm trying to find a place to move the text where it's not lost. And you can't get right near the edges. You have to kind of be you know somewhere towards the, the middle a bit. And I just can't find a good place for it. So the half tip would be to take a black layer, to take a layer, fill it with black, and put it on top of your photo, and then simply lower the opacity, all right? That kind of back screens it. And now you can clearly see here, let me select my, my text. I can kind of put it anywhere now, and it'll be fine. But... I really didn't want to wash out the photo this much. So I went with a different plan, all right? So let's just raise that back up and stick it behind. Okay, so here was my different plan. I decided to move her over. So I'm gonna get the move tool and slide her over here to where you still have a little bit of her hand showing. And then I was gonna fill this with blue. Now the problem is if you look at the background, there's different shades of blue. It's a lighter blue and then it kind of fades down and all. So you can't just pick a blue and fill it. It would look stupid. So I'm gonna show you a trick that I've been using for years. Now this is not the big trick, it's the second to the big trick, but it's very, very handy. I've been literally using this for years anytime I need to extend a background like this. It's so easy and so effective. Here's what you do. Duplicate the layer, that's step one. So just grab the layer and drag it to the new layer icon. So now you have a duplicate. Now you're gonna to go to free transform, press command T on Mac or control T on Windows. Right click anywhere inside your photo and then choose flip horizontal. So it's gonna flip the image the opposite direction. Well, what does that do? Well, what it does, is it allows me to drag the image over to the left. And you'll see at some point, the colors kind of line right up, which is why you flip it horizontal. Now in this particular case, you can see there's a little tiny white line on the edge. So I'm just gonna erase that. You can literally grab the eraser or I'm just gonna make a marquee selection and just hit delete. And then I just use the move tool to nudge it over. You won't have to do this. This is just kind of unique to my photo, but look at that. Look at that nice clean blending of it. Now we come down to the important part and the reason why I wanted to do this tutorial. Let's merge these two layers together by pressing Command E on Mac or Control E on Windows. And you'll see we've got this kind of part of her is still sticking out over here. You don't want that. So if I went to, uh, and I did, by the way, I went to, uh, Content-aware fill, <laughs> there we go. Edit, fill, and it's supposed to make a intelligent, or an intelligent, that sounds better, an intelligent fill of that. So I click OK, and as you can see, it's not awesome. Well, if it doesn't work awesome, go to undo. My second line of defense is the patch tool. The patch tool is for fixing the big things. When you need to erase something big, you go to the patch tool, something small, you go to the healing brush. So let's just drag this. This is how the tool works. You make a selection around the area. You drag it to someplace clean where there's nothing bad. Let go and you get that smeary mess. Here comes the trick finally. Okay, let's undo that. When that happens, here's what you have to do. You're going to go up here to the, when you have the patch tool, you're going to go up here and where it says patch don't choose normal. Normal works normally. It works great most of the time. When you see this mess, you're going to switch to, instead of doing normal, you're going to switch to using the patch tool in content aware mode. Now when you drag it away and let go, ta -da, it fixed it. In fact, I think I could probably pick a better place than that. Let's move over here. And nope, I think it was better where we were, right? there. Pretty smooth patch. I can see a little bit of a line there. If that's the case, just grab that line and move it away. Kind of, hey, that stinks. <laughs> that's a that's a stinky tip. Let's go over this way. Ah, that's better. I can also see one from earlier right up there. Let's just move that out of the way. Let's not do content aware fill there. Oh, by the way, that's what's happening here. That content aware thing works great when you're on the edge. It doesn't work so great when you're not. Go to normal, and that should be 
better. Yes, over here, move this better. Yes, there we go. It's Now it's like two and three quarters tips. So my mistake becomes your bonus. <laughs> well, thanks everybody. I hope you enjoyed watching this. Hey, if you really want to learn like Photoshop on a crazy level, right? We have over, well, over 200 classes in our Kelby One Pro plan. Go over and look at kelbyone.com. You can join for as little as $10 a month, or you can go for the pro plan and get it all. Over 800 classes and a whole community and all these people around the world waiting to help you get really, really good at Photoshop. Thanks, everybody. We'll catch you guys next time.